Hi, my name is Kylan Savage. I'm doing A-level biology and today we're going to be going over the liver. Well, by the end of this video you should be able to describe um, the histology and growth structure of the liver. Um, we're supposed to be able to do that with the aims of, di aids of diagrams and photographs. It's going to be a bit trickier for me to do it with that to show you because I'll just be like holding up, I'll be holding up my book the whole time, but I'll try. So, we'll start from the beginning. Basically, the structure of the liver. The liver cells, hepatocytes, I think that's how you say it, carry out loads and loads, hundreds of metabolic processes and the liver has a really important role in homeostasis. It's therefore really essential that it's got a really good supply of blood. And the internal structure of the liver is arranged to ensure that as much blood as possible flows past as many liver cells as possible. Because it really, really needs that blood. So, it's a bit weird because unusually the liver is supplied with blood from two sources. It's got oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. And this is where it gets the blood from. And the oxygenated blood is supplied from the heart. The blood travels from the aorta via the hepatic artery into the liver. So, oxygenated blood from the heart travels from the aorta via the hepatic artery into the liver. This supplies the oxygen that is essential for aerobic respiration. And the liver cells are really active as they carry out loads and loads of metabolic processes. And obviously, these processes really require energy in the form of ATP. So it's important that they've got a really good supply of oxygen. As well as oxygenated blood, the liver is supplied with deoxygenated blood from the digestive system. This enters the liver via the hepatic portal vein. Don't confuse this with the oxygenated blood. When they get the oxygenated blood from the heart, it travels via the aorta, from the aorta via the hepatic artery. Deoxygenated blood enters the liver via the hepatic portal vein. Think of it, and uh, if you've got a way to remember it, um, you've got oxygenated blood. That's basically like two words oxygenated blood. Same two words as hepatic artery, just two. But when you've got deoxygenated blood, you've got deoxygenated blood, hepatic portal vein. So for oxygenated blood, hepatic artery, you just think of two things. Deoxygenated blood, hepatic portal vein. Three things. Um, anyway, this blood is rich in the paradox of digestion. And the concentrations and various compounds will be uncontrolled. And the blood may contain toxic compounds that could have been absorbed in the intestine. Well, blood leaves the liver via the hepatic vein. This rejoins the vena cava, I was right, vena cava and the blood um, returns to normal circulation. However, there's a fourth vessel connected to the liver that's not a blood vessel. It's the bile duct. Bile is a secretion from the liver. It's got a digestive function and an excretory function. The bile duct carries bile from the liver to the gallbladder where it's stored until required to aid the digestion of fat in the small intestine. So what have we gone over so far? We've gone over the structure of the liver. Um, basically we've looked at that, that the hepatocytes, the liver cells, carry out loads of metabolic, metabolic processes and it's got, um, the liver has an important fun role to play in homeostasis. So it needs lo lots of blood. Each liver cell has to, be, has to have lots of blood flowing past it all the time. Um, we've looked at that it's strange but the liver has two um, blood sources. It's got oxygenated blood from the heart which travels from the aorta um, via the hepatic artery into the liver supplying the oxygen that's essential for aerobic respiration. We've also looked at the deoxygenated blood from the, in the digestive system entering the liver via the hepatic portal vein um, which is rich in the products of digestion. We've looked at the liver, the blood leaving the liver via the hepatic vein and the bile ducts. So, we looked a bit at the structure of the liver, but how are the cells arranged inside the liver? Well, the cells, blood vessels and chambers inside the liver are arranged to ensure the best possible contact between blood and the liver cells. And the liver is divided into these lobes, which are further divided into cylindrical lobules. So, you've got liver, lobes, 
cylindrical lobules. So big da da. Liver lobes cylindrical lobules. Liver lobes cylindrical lobules. And as the hepatic artery and the portal vein enter the liver, they split into smaller and smaller vessels. And these vessels run between and parallel to the lobules and are known as interlobular vessels. So which one was the lobules? It goes liver, lobes, cylindrical lobules. Great. At intervals, branches from the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein enter the lobules. And the blood from the two blood vessels is mixed and passes along a special chamber called a sinusoid. This sinusoid is lined by liver cells. So, as the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein enter the liver, they split into smaller and smaller vessels, which run between and parallel to the lobules, and are known as interlobular vessels. Then, at intervals, branches from the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein enter the lobules, and the blood from the two blood vessels is mixed, and runs along a sinusoid, which is lined by liver cells. Great. Well, the sinusoid is empty into the intralobular vessel, which is a branch of the hepatic vein. The branches of the hepatic vein from different lobules join together to form the hepatic vein, which drains blood from the liver. And as this blood flows on the sinusoid, it's in really close contact with the liver cells. And these are able to remove, remove molecules from the blood and pass molecules into the blood. And there are loads of functions, but one of the many functions of the liver cells is to manufacture bile. And this is released into the bile canaliculi. I'm really sorry if I said that wrong, I don't know how the teacher says it. But. Um, these join together to form the bile duct, which transports the bile to the gallbladder. Now, I think there's one in the book, but I think I've got a bigger one in my book somewhere. But it's really tricky to explain what the liver looks like without a diagram because you have to know um, what the, where the hepatic portal vein is, where the hepatic artery is. It's very, very confusing. So if I hold up a diagram, it will be back to front, I'm afraid. Um, not back to front, mirrored. Mirror flipped, I'll use my book. But you should be able to see. So this, what I'm about to show you, is the arrangement of liver cells in a lobule. So do you see that there? If you have an OCD architect's book, you're probably realising, sorry, I get all my information from. So just have a look at it, because I'm just trying to show you the best I can on here. Basically, this is the lobule. This is the hepatic portal vein, the big blue one in the middle. And this is the branch of the hepatic artery. So remember, um, at intervals, branches from the hepatic vein and the hepatic portal vein enter the lobules. Yeah, so you can see that all. You can see that's the hepatic portal vein, hepatic artery, da da da. And these go in. Can you see? Can you see where the little arrows are? Yeah? You see they're mixing together up here and then they're going to this at the top. What's that? That's the hepatic vein. Yeah? And then when we were talking. Oh, there's the. This bit's the sinusoid. Like, this big bit here. Um, and we also talked about the bile duct, so see if you can guess what the bile duct is. Um, I was going to say without reading, but you probably won't be able to read it. Yeah, the bile duct is a little green one on the end. So basically, um, the liver cells manufacture bile. And this is released into the bile caniculi, and which join together to form the bile duct, which transports the bile to the gallbladder. And that is a branch of the bile duct. So I'm sorry I can't explain it much better, um, but that's something that you really need to look at and try and work out yourself, because otherwise um, I haven't really got a good enough diagram. Um, send me money, and I will be able to do this all on here, and I'll just, uh, I'll just go like this, and it'll pop up, and I'll have a little interactive thing here. Send me money, and I'll do that. Um, okay, so basically we're carrying on. Okay, we've looked at that, so now we're going to look at liver cells. Liver cells, or do you remember what we called them earlier? They had a really specific name. Hepatocytes. Hepatocytes? Hepatocytes. And these, um, they appear to be relatively unspecialised. They've got a really simple um, cuboidal shape with loads and loads of microvilli on their surface. However, they have loads of most metabolic functions and these include protein synthesis, transformation and storage of core carbohydrates, synthesis of cholesterol and bile salts, detoxification and loads of other processes. This means that their cytoplasm has to be really dense 
and it's really specialised in the certain organelles that it contains. So basically liver cells, cuboidal shape, microbial on their surface, they protein synthesise, transform and storage carbohydrates, synthesise cholesterol and bile salts, detoxify and many other processes. Great. So that was liver cells. But what are kupfer cells? They've got a really weird name, kupfer. Basically, they're specialised macrophages. Now you probably won't be able to see, but in a little diagram I showed you, there were a couple of kupfer cells. I'm going to point to one here. It's a little yellow blob. Do you see it there? The little yellow blob in the middle? Yeah, that's a kupfer cell. Basically, they move about within the sinusoids and they're involved in the breakdown and recycling of old red blood cells. What's another word for a red blood cell? I'm not even going to tell you. You've got to try and work it out yourself. You should know that. It begins with E. Um, okay. One of the products in hemoglobin breakdown is bilirubin. Bilirubin? Bilirubin, however you want to say it. Um, and that's excreted as part of bile and in feces. And that's basically the brown pigment. So that's basically cut for cells. Not that much to learn on them. Just know they're specialised macrophages. Macrophages. And the primary function of them is the breakdown and recycling of old red blood cells. So that's great, we've done it. We've gone over the liver and we haven't done it in too much time so you can tick this off, you can learn how to have a break now. Um, you've done a lot of hard work. Um, I hope you understood that all. It's quite hard to do this when you don't have diagrams. Um, so well done for bearing with me and I hope you got some of that, <laughs> got some of what I was trying to tell you. Uh, if you want to test yourself um, explain why the liver has two supplies of blood. You could also describe how liver structure ensures blood flow flows past as many liver cells as possible. And finally, oh yeah, this is a good one. Um, do you remember when I was talking about the liver cells and I said that their cytoplasm must be really dense and is really specialised in the amounts of certain organelles it contains? Well, a really good question for you could be because you're probably like, well, what are the organelles? You could suggest which organelles may be particularly common in the cytoplasm of liver cells. And that's the word suggest. That apparently will be coming up a lot in our exams. Um, there are going to be a lot more suggest questions, which are questions that we don't know the answer to, but you really have to apply your knowledge from other things that you've learned. So good luck in your A-level biology exams. Um, this is really tricky, so well done for sticking with me. Thank you. Bye.